Hey all, Ryan Florence here. I want to show you the new streaming defer suspense features in Remix 1.11. We've been working on this for literally six months and we finally shipped it and it's awesome. Now I've got a little e-commerce demo because it makes the use case very obvious. Um, I've got some critical data up here for like the products that I'm looking at and then I've got this not critical stuff kind of below the fold as some people say with these collections. You see these social things. I actually loaded those with uh, in the browser with client side fetches. Uh, but all this stuff came from the server. Um, it's pretty fast right now. It's not bad. If I hit refresh, we can see, you know, that's that's a pretty quick, pretty quick little thing. But what if these collections are really slow? What if they take three seconds? Well, first, I'm going to call somebody at Shopify and say, hey, why the heck is this taking three seconds? But did you see how long that favicon was spinning? One, two, three. Wow. Ah. So this, this data up here was probably ready, but the data down here wasn't. So the whole point of this feature is, uh, well, one of the main use cases for this feature, there are others, is um, to be able to split up the data dependencies on a page and uh, only wait for the critical bits and then defer anything else. So let's defer um, this, uh, this query, this slow one. So instead of uh, awaiting all of these promises, let's just blow away this promise. And uh, let's get, let's say that this is my collections and this is my main content. And now I've got these two, uh, these two promises. And instead of sending JSON, like I'm just gonna send a promise and it'll get stringified, that's not what I want. I'm gonna bring in something called defer. And this is coming from uh, Remix. So I'm going to say, hey, you can, you can defer these. Now, the, the main content I want to await. That's critical data. So I'm going to wait for that. But this uh, promise I'm not. And then down here, there uh, is a little bit of boilerplate that we need to add. Okay, so you can see in that quick refactor that uh, all we did was wrap it in suspense to get our fallback element in await so that uh, Remix knows to, that it's waiting for this part and can resolve that promise. And then it'll call back to us with the actual uh, value. And then I just pass it to this component, component just like I did before. Uh, now watch what happens. I'm gonna save this and pay attention over here. Here we go, save. Favicon spins, this lands, and now look, that stuff is, has been deferred for those three seconds. Let's watch it again. So I hit refresh, favicon. So these come very, it's, it's hard to see. Let me get to a blank page. Enter. So very quick, uh, this deferred data is coming very quickly. And then this, or sorry, this critical data. And then this deferred data, uh, we don't have to sit there and wait for it. Super cool. It's not just for a content sites. It's actually really good for app uh, style experiences. So let's go check out, um, a little search trends demo. So we can search, uh, oh, look at that, React Router, getting a lot of um, a lot of Googling lately. If I do Remix, oh, not so much, dang it. But this is also using Defer. Now you'll notice that when I click this link, it immediately shows a loading state right there. So there are some UIs where maybe you don't even have critical data. Maybe you don't care about SEO. Maybe you don't care about um, server rendering. Um, but the point of defer is not just about those things. Uh, defer is also about being able to have your transitions be much faster. So the user clicks a link or a button or a nav item or, or a project or anything in your app. And instead of waiting for all that data before the next screen shows up, you can go to that next screen pretty much immediately put up a skeleton UI or some sort of spinner or something and then put it in there. Uh, and this is great for app-like experiences because apps usually have a more fixed layout and uh, a little bit more expectation of when I click on a nav item, I expect something to change very quickly. Uh, it doesn't feel like I'm switching pages. It feels like I'm just like trying to change the data that I'm looking at. So defer is useful in app scenarios as well for those instant transitions and then let the data pop in when it comes.